Hello, everyone, and welcome to our bonus edition of World's True Crime Podcast. I'm Brad, and with me is my beautiful fiance, Denise. You know that's never going to get too old. Hello, everyone. Oh, I know, right? It's one of those <laughs> things that we planned from the start where he's going to keep on forever, probably. Yeah, you can just keep telling me I'm beautiful every day. Yep. And this is our first Patreon podcast, and we decided to go to Finland for this one. You bet. We haven't. We didn't want to do a big one. This is kind of a smaller one, kind of wraps up pretty fast. But It's really tiny. There's not much information about this one. Yeah, we thought it'd be known and just get it out there and just see what happens with this one. Yeah, exactly. They can't all be big ones. We have to dig in some of the smaller ones, too. Oh, yeah, 100%. These small ones need to get recognition as well. Exactly. 100%. So we hope that everybody likes this Patreon episode. So today we're going to be talking about the Allo child murders in Finland. Mm-hmm. And Denise, who are we referring to? We are looking at Kaisa Emilia Vorninen. She is the Olu child murderer. And we don't know her date of birth or anything like that, right? No, there's no information really about her. I think that's why she's not really done on podcasts. Oh, probably. Do they know whereabouts maybe that her age might be? Uh, they think that she's around 35 years old. Okay, 35 then. Still pretty young. Extremely. She was born in uh, 1979 in Finland. Okay, so we have a kind of a date. But yeah. it's not actual or? No, we don't have a month. I didn't have a, like, I, I only have a year and uh, her actual age. But month, don't have. Date, oh. don't have. Okay. Our story takes place in a town called Alu, North Austro-Bothnia. Yeah, it's a region of Finland. It borders the Finnish regions of Lapland, Kainuu, North Central Finland, and Central Ostrobothnia, as well as the Russian Republic of Karelia. Looking at the map, I would say smack dab in the middle of the country. That's a better description right there, because I don't know what any of the other stuff is. Neither but... do I, but it's good to get it out there. Exactly. I don't know much about Finland, but I'd really like to learn. Yeah, on June 3rd, 2014, a caretaker of an apartment building received complaints about a strange foul smell coming from the basement of the storage room. Yeah, the caretaker went to investigate Mm -hmm. and to see what was causing the smell. And what he found was like several packages. He did not want to open them, so he just called the authorities. Oh, I wouldn't want to open it either. I would. Just a mat. Oh, yeah, but you're so weird. I totally would open them. (sighs) You're, is something wrong? Like Okay, we're not saying that. Come on. (laughs) No, there is something wrong. When there's anything, <laughs> when there's anything strange that's going on, you have to investigate. I do. When the Alu police arrived, the building caretaker and all the tenants had the packages outside. Well, you wouldn't want to keep them inside. Well, no. Oh, just that smell of death. Yeah. Both the police and tenants were about to open up the packages when Kaiza came running out to them and told police they should not open them. Well, that's... <laughs> I mean, when somebody comes outside to say, don't open these packages, <laughs> don't open it. I mean, I would probably open those packages and be like, why don't you want me to open them? Well, even at that point, even at that point, I'm not one that wants to look into stuff. But if somebody told me not to do something, I'm, I definitely want to do it. Yeah, don't push the button. I'm oh, yeah. pushing that freaking oh, button. Yep, I'm doing it. <laughs> World War 3 is Don't started. touch that. Oh, I'm touching it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they all went inside... Then she said that she would explain everything, but I mean, why would she want everybody to go inside? Just Well, it was just the police that she wanted to go inside, yeah. not all the tenants and everything, but just the police to go inside and she was going to explain everything to them. Yeah. So I bet you that just smelled like probably rotten food and stuff like that. It probably smelled like maggots and rotting flesh. That's, well, rotting food for sure. Like, Well, yeah. So this is when the story takes a morbid twist and they find out that they're not dealing with just rotten food. So the reason why Kaisa didn't want them to open the packages in front of the apartment was because when they opened up the packages, they would discover the cause of the horrendous smell. It was due to having five infant bodies in different forms of decay, two boys and three girls. Oh my God, that's just horrendous to have to go up onto that? She... Five of her babies. Who well, does that? Oh, these are her babies. These are her babies. Oh, okay. I thought maybe like sometimes they have like uh, people taking babies to sell and sometimes they die, right? No, these were her babies. Oh, wow. Where's her, did she have a husband, you know? Uh, she had an, a boyfriend. Okay. So she gave birth 
five times. Did she like go to the hospital? Did they know nope, about this? No, nope. so they didn't know about this. Nope. She gave birth in, alone in her apartment without the help of anyone. So that's probably why they went unnoticed for a long time, right? Right. Which is so uncommon for somebody to do this because child welfare and medical services are offered in Finland. Okay. So there was the ability to go in the hospital, have your child, and taken care of. There, okay. It wasn't going to be all of a sudden you're going to get this huge bill. Oh, so it's kind of like how we have the same as Canada here too. Yeah, exactly. With the same, the approach the same healthcare where we go to the hospital, have a have a child, and we're not going to get dinged for a ton of money. Or yeah, anything. we're not going to all of a sudden have a thirty thousand dollar bill because we gave birth in the hospital and they have to take uh, cover our medical expenses, our ho our, our hotel. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> um, our room. Right. So I mean, if you. It's pretty weird to me in some countries that that they would charge people to go to the hospital to have births because then I would just want to have birth at home, like you know. In the, oh, I would too. Because you, people have them in like little like waiting pools and stuff. Yeah, they have them in the bathtub or they rent um, those kiddie pools. Yeah, that's what kind of what I was thinking there. The yeah, little, the little waiting pool. No, but the reason why they they do this is to prevent diseases and other types of health issues. Okay. Yep. Um, so it's something that has reduced. Problems in childbirth for the last decades. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. In Finland, it's extremely rare for mothers to give births in their homes. And actually, 99.8% of births happen in hospitals. Okay, that's a pretty good number. Yeah. In um, 2011, only 10 births happened in a person's home. Oh. Not sure if that was a planned thing or as an emergency situation. Kaisa Wen told the police that she was living with a violent man and she feared their safety. So that's why she didn't actually seek advice from a doctor. Although at one point in the case, they suspected the new husband of infanticide and aiding and abetting one death since the birth of the child was close to the beginning of their relationship. So what you're trying to say in the just terms is that the first death was close to when the relationship first started? Exactly. Oh, okay. That makes a little sense because I would I would assume that would be the husband doing that as well if that happened at that time. Well, yeah. You would think that he knows about the pregnancy and he would be part of the plan to abort. Yeah, or, get rid of the babies. Or get, yeah, get rid of the babies. Maybe they couldn't afford the child. Yeah. There's lots of things that happen because a lot of mothers don't want babies. They, they like the idea of having a baby, but then when the baby comes, they don't want the baby. Yeah, exactly. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough strong case against him. Well, why would I say unfortunate? He didn't do it. Well, well he's, uh, she, he was told that, you know, he was a jerk. Well, we don't know if he was a jerk because she said he was I'm a sure. man. Oh, that's true. We don't know that for sure. It's speculation. Okay. I don't understand that she felt her life was more important than her five children that she gave birth to. That's just some people's mentalities. Especially mothers. Sometimes when mothers first give birth. What's that called? Uh, I heard that was called postpartum depression. It is. Yeah. So I could see when mothers first get postpartum depression that they don't want to have their children mm -hmm. so they decide to get rid of them but they like the idea of having children true when you have a child and it's crying doesn't stop it, it gets to you yeah but if there's a man involved there too it'd be hard to hide that from a man if he's sitting there if she's yeah. the baby's crying exactly so i mean she must have just given birth and then killed the children well she did she did it when she was by herself okay but I don't understand how he didn't know that she was pregnant. She carried a term. Yeah, that's unheard of to me to have. Well, that's not unheard of because I've no, seen. There's TV shows where people like say they, they didn't know that they were pregnant. Yeah. I, re I remember watching some TV shows in there. They go through the whole pregnancy. Like, the whole family doesn't know that they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they give birth upstairs in the, the bedroom or something. I know. I, I don't understand that because when I was pregnant, I felt this baby moving around <laughs> kicking me and. I swore the thing was going to break my spine. And not to say anything, but I knew you were pregnant without uh, knowing that you were pregnant. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm just fat, hon. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a little obvious when your belly is pretty big. I just carry right my belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know what she's gone through to make this decision. No, we don't. So we can't really expect like, what she went through. Cause Until you walk through someone's shoes, you have no idea. No, exactly. And for all we know, that she could have been abused by that man, and 
this might have been a way to get back at him just to kill his babies. She she could have. I've been in a situation where I was not in a great relationship and people kept telling me I should run and it took many years of me sticking it out. You can't decide to run until you know to run. For the record that she's not talking about me. No, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have been together for 14 years. Yeah, that's on record. Yeah. It's not, it's not about me. No, 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 no. So before the police are knocking at my door, it's not about me. No, it's not about you. <laughs> the police did come knocking at my door and they told me to run. Yeah, but not from me. <laughs> not from you. <laughs> but there's always like helplines that you can call, um, family, friends. There are sources that you can reach out to. Oh, 100%. There's a lot of places online you can look, like a lot of hotlines you can call if you need help. Yep, I did that. And they were fantastic. When you come into a situation and you don't know what to do, you need a friendly voice, a person of reason. They are fantastic to talk to. Yep. You don't have to call the police. They call the police. You just keep yourself secure. So I don't see the reason behind all this. To take five lives. Also, too, I'm wondering, too, because when you give birth to a baby, it always, obviously leaves a mess. After birth? After birth. That's what there it is. <laughs> I knew it was something birth. <laughs> Before, first, the after. Gunk. Yeah. So, obviously, there's after birth, and there's probably a big mess to clean up. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was in the room when we gave birth to our son, and, yeah, that day haunts me. <laughs> and we were in the hospital. Exactly, but yeah. But then again, it was a C-section, and you had to cut a cord. Yeah, that's what passed out. Yeah. You're so manly. (laughs) (laughs) It's like watching Dr. Pimple Popper. You're like, I can't watch this stuff. (laughs) How can you watch it? And yet I'm the kind of person that I can't look at blood because I'll pass out. In person, if I see blood, I'll pass out, but I can watch TV shows. Go figure. Yeah, no doubt. Also, too, I was also wondering, too, was she living in a house or an apartment building? Yeah, she actually lived at the Roma Kakatu apartments and had her babies in the storage unit there. And then she moved to the um, Peltakatu apartments. Okay, so 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 she lived in one apartment, had babies there, mm-hmm. and then she transported had, them to yes, another apartment. She didn't yes. get rid of them. She didn't get rid of them right away. No, she took them. Oh wow! So if she had another child and a man. Did they, did they not look in the freezer at all to find babies in there? Well, the freezer was in the storage unit in the basement. Oh, okay. So she kind of kept she, it hidden from everybody. Yeah, she had them in the storage or uh, the freezer at the um, Roma Kakatu apartments. Mm-hmm. And then she moved over to the um, Peltakatu apartments and she kept them in boxes there. Bo- okay. Yeah. That's why the rotting, the, the, the smell started. Okay. Do you know what year that she gave birth to these children? Yeah, actually. You do? Okay. I do. Yeah, the kids were actually born in 2005. 2007, and then again in 2011 or early 2012, they weren't sure, and then also in 2013. Okay. So the one, they're not sure if it was born late 2011 and early 2012. Okay. So there's was, there was a couple that were pretty close there. Like there's mm-hmm. one early 2012 and one in 2012. So like there maybe one beginning and maybe one at end or something. Exactly. Okay. And you don't know how the, the cause of deaths were or anything? Did, did you no, say? No, it was not uh, determined because the bodies were so severely degraded by the time that they were able to do an autopsy. Oh, uh, I bet. Well, also, too, they were being frozen, too, right? Like, it probably does a number on their bodies. Well, they did determine that all the babies were born between 35 and 37 weeks. So it's almost full term. Yeah, I'm just thinking that's because it would. What... 40 weeks is full term. Oh, so that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so they, they probably actually were born. Just early. Mm-hmm. Without, yeah. Right. So there was, even if they came early, if she would have went to a hospital, they would have lived. There's, exactly. With yeah. our technology now, yeah, they can, they'll live. Yeah. So what was she charged with? She was probably like manslaughter, first degree murder or something? Manslaughter and concealment of a corpse or corpses. Well, yeah, it'd probably be multiple corpses. Five corpses. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, well, she, so she was charged with five counts of murder and five counts of concealment? Is that kind of what's going on? Yeah, five counts of homicide and five counts of concealment. Okay. I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there that if you hear any noises, our cats are running around right now. Yeah, we, we have, have three, three cats, three ki- kittens. Kittens. So they're kind of playing around right now. So if anybody hears any of them, just, uh, yeah, it's them. Yep, Luca, Lucy, and Jackson. 
Yeah, we can't lock them out of the room because they will scratch at the door and it'll be <laughs> so much worse. Yeah. So they're so, just walking around on the table and making a mess of everything. Yeah, so just bear with us. Mm-hmm. During the investigation, she was actually charged with five counts of homicide and five counts of concealment. About a week after the discovery of the infant bodies, Kaisa's father was interrogated. He described his daughter as a pathological liar. Well, I guess she's got a lot of things for sure. Patholo- pathological liar seems like the least of them all, mm, I think. Yep. Well, you hide five bodies. You but, lied about that. Yep. Kaisa's father only knew about the pregnancy in 2010, which ended in miscarriage. He said that he had no idea about the other five. He said, quote, Her lying began more clearly in adolescence. Now in the final stages, I no longer believe her speeches at all, but let them go in one ear and out the other. She promised to go for treatment after one case was investigated. Uh, Which case was that one? That case involved borrowing money from her little sister's ex-boyfriend. Okay. The loan was not repaid by Kaisa. It also raised the possibility of pregnancy, but she denied it. In the end, it turned out that she hadn't even gone there for therapy. The father said his daughter was in contact mainly when she needed money. Small sums. Two tens or five tens for various reasons, which I did not quote for any worse. But as a father, I still wanted to help. So you said she already had a daughter, right? So actually... Her firstborn was born in her home, and she never did have medical attention for that one either. Oh, wow. The father actually said, we were all in shock, but it was a happy event. Even Case's father offered to take the child from his daughter if she didn't want it. So I'm guessing that the daughter had a really close relationship with uh, her, her parents? I would think so, but I think more so the parents didn't trust her. Right. And wanted to protect the baby. Okay. Case's father actually told his daughter that the child should have his own keys to get in the house. Or the apartment, I should say. It wasn't until December 2014 that the actual court proceedings began. Okay, this is a relatively new case then. Extremely. When you think about it, that's only about eight years ago. Yep. And everybody having a, a camera on their phone now. You'd think that somebody had noticed that she'd be, you know, she was pregnant or something at some point because could they tell by different pictures or something like that maybe? Well, there's people that suspected it. Okay. But she always had some sort of excuse. Okay. Makes sense. So in the court proceedings, Kesa gave her explanation of how she gave birth and her way of dealing with the situation was she usually gave birth in the bathroom or toilet wrapped the babies in a plastic bag, then in a bucket, closed it, and then took it to the basement. So you can almost assume that if you just put them in the plastic bags almost immediately, that would almost be cause of death would probably be uh, suffocation. Exactly. That's what they figure has happened. They don't suspect that the babies were stillborn. Right, yeah. So in two instances, she claimed that she used a sauna bucket and a shoe box instead of a normal bucket. A sauna bucket, you know those kind of um, wooden buckets that people used in the hot showers that they had the ladle and they would just pour water on the hot coals? I grew up in a, with a sauna, so um, I obviously know yeah, about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Okay, you got me there. But yeah, that's the kind of bucket that she threw a baby in. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, we never really used uh, like the sauna bucket. We would take a glass of water or something and bring it in there with us or something like that. Okay, but you know one of those. Yeah, you see them in movies and stuff. Right. Russian bathhouses. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So the judge actually said, these acts are considered especially aggressive because the woman murdered helpless, defenseless children entirely dependent upon her. Which is extremely sad because, you know, they're her children and she just murdered them and they had no way to defend themselves or anything. And she's supposed to love them, not kill them. Right. And she did the same acts all five times. Wow. The judge also continued saying that the homicides took place by leaving the newborns without care and warmth. Clearly, this measure caused particular agony to the babies. So, in this case, Kesa broke new ground, since District Prosecutor Sari Kampainen said that this is the first case in Finnish criminal history. Of child murder? Yeah, in this kind of degree of... Giving birth and killing your babies immediately. 
I find that kind of odd because it happens in a lot of countries throughout the world, and you think that this would happen sometime in their past. Well, I think Finland's more of a peaceful country. Yeah, I'd, I'd assume so too. Especially when 98.8% of people give birth in a hospital. So they're very caring towards their newborns. Yeah. But Kesa actually claimed that if she was found guilty, it would be at most charges of negligent homicide or aggravated death. Okay, so the approach like our manslaughter almost. Yeah, it's like she didn't think it was premeditated. Yeah, exactly. Which it was. We'll get into that. She said that every baby that she gave birth to was lifeless. They didn't move or cry, so she assumed that all five were stillborn. That I don't see that, right? Because I was there when our son was born, and he was coming out crying, and yeah, that happens. Yeah, well, it's... It's tough to of, have all five come out not right. doing anything. All five are stillborn? If you think that one was stillborn, like, if if she didn't think she was doing anything wrong, then why'd she just do it in the hospital? Exactly. That's also why. There is no reason why she should have given birth in her home. No, exactly. Especially if 99 point, what was it? 99.43? 98 point, no, 99.8. Right. So she's the 0.2% that does it at home and then they all just die? And yeah. And says that they weren't crying or anything? Right. Yeah, she did this. And, and she didn't tell anybody she was pregnant? Nope. So obviously it's not right what she's saying mm-hmm. there. There's so many questions that go against her. Yeah, I can see that. But she can tell her she's totally a pathological liar, though. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It Actually, it wasn't even until the court proceedings that she found out that the babies were alive. I'm not sure how they figured out. Maybe the way she put them in the bag and they changed positions after? Mm, yeah, maybe. Hard to say without them saying exactly why. But, yeah. yeah. There's probably a few things that they could probably figure out from in there. Could be that there where they found... Uh, uh, saliva or something in the bags? It could be, because they figured that the babies died within one to four days right. after she stuffed them in a bag. Yeah, so the, there could probably be saliva found in the bags, DNA, of them like actually spitting something up or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. Something, yeah. Of the 550 pages of the investigation, 300 pages were actually interrogations against her. Okay, that's a lot. Of inter- like, mm-hmm. the, she, they must have interrogated her for a long time. Oh, yeah. Well, they had full rights to do yeah. that. 300 pages of it, yeah. Yeah. Actually, 28 people interviewed, this, including relatives, colleagues, and acquaintances. Her ex-husband, name unknown, it's not given, and I could see why he would not want his name out there. Oh, yeah, exactly. They suspect that he was the father of the last three infants. But wasn't he there for the whole time? He was not there for the entire time. He was there for the last one. So I'm guessing that that's why he was not, that's why he was let go earlier because he was there from near the beginning, but not the actual beginning of it. So that's why they couldn't try him for it. So that's why they went towards her. That's what I'm getting from the story, too. Because it was the last three. Those were in 2012, uh, early 2012, 2012, and 2013. And the first ones were in 2008, 9, or 7, and 8, or something like that. So, I mean, it was close. He was probably there in between after the second ones, and then followed up with the third ones would be my guess. I'm with you on that one. Okay. Yeah. Makes a little more sense now. Yeah, it's a... We... Don't know all the details of everything. It's kind of jumbled. Well, it's probably there's not a lot of information about this one that I well, see here. That's why we're doing this as a Patreon episode. Exactly. A lot of it is undisclosed to the public, and I'm going on to Finland newspaper and trying to do the translates. Yeah, it's it's hard finding information because some countries they don't release them to other countries. Right, they keep them private. I totally see that. Yeah, I can see that with this one. Mm-hmm. If I don't want this to get out too much, too much farther, and they keep it in their own language, so nobody really knows about it. Well, yeah, Finland's a peaceful place, right? You don't want people to know about this person who killed five babies. Yep. So this is where it comes back about concealment. You're talking about how how did she hide this from everyone? Yeah. Well, she was wearing loose 
clothing. Okay. So baggy sweatshirts, which, to be fair, it actually hides quite a bit. Yeah, so she's pretending she's from the 90s again. Going grunge. <laughs> yeah, that's what I used to wear. <laughs> Growing up in the 90s. Yeah. Her family didn't even know about the pregnancy. She, they only knew about that one. Yeah. Which she miscarried. Yeah. You know what her excuse was? No. She had eaten too much pizza the previous night and was all bloated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can see that because sometimes I eat too much pizza and I feel bloated too. Yeah, I guess so. I, I've eaten too much pizza and I feel like I have a baby within me, but I don't look like I have a baby that's <laughs> nine months long. Yeah, I love my pizza. <laughs> but I mean, every, like... Come on, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So... Every day you ate too much pizza? Because yeah. this is ongoing, right? Yes, it is. So Five times maybe it happens. You should, maybe you should lay off the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lay off my pizza. No. So, oh. Yeah. oh. Okay. So, I was just about to say, so, I mean, when after you have a baby, aren't you, like, kind of bedridden for a little bit afterwards? Maybe before? Because you're about to burst. Like, I know that some people, they're pregnant, they take time off work, obviously, like, mm-hmm. before and obviously after because they need time to recuperate and heal. Right. So, you think that she's, you know, how did that happen? How did that work? Well, I haven't given birth the original, normal way. Yeah. But after having a baby, you can have a tear right. down below. And after pushing out let's face it, like a watermelon, Yeah, you're not going to be walking properly and your mind is on that child. Like it's going to be hard to go on with your day acting like nothing happened, that you didn't give birth or you pooped out that pizza finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I remember when you were in the hospital, you were, you were in there for four days afterwards. Well, yeah. Cause you were, you were both bedridden for those four days. Exactly. So I, Apparently, she just went on her day, doing her grocery shopping, wow. went to work, seeing her friends, as if nothing happened. Wow. That's quite the mindset to give birth, kill your baby, and go on we'll with your day. Get groceries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, got to go get my milk. Yeah. So, not only did the court say that she just killed her babies, they their reason was she actually premeditated these. She planned the births, was hiding them, disposed them, and was well aware of what she was doing. Oh, hundred percent. Because you have a child, at, you have a baby at home. You, you think you tell family, you, you know, if you're pregnant or something, because you know your body you knows that if something, oh, my bot, my stomach's getting bigger, I'm pregnant. You think you tell somebody? Well, yeah. My first well, pregnancy was I was really young mm-hmm. and terrified, but yet I still reached out and told my family for the support. Yeah, if she didn't want the babies, you'd think that she would just terminate the pregnancy early in the pregnancy because you could do that, uh, abortions, Mm -hmm. early on. And you're allowed to do it, I think, at a certain point in the year, before like the first trimester or something. Exactly. Or she could have taken birth control, used condoms. Yeah. There are female condoms now. Yeah. So you think there'd be some sort of action? Because if she, why did she take them to full term pretty much and then just kill them? Like, does she just like the idea of being pregnant? But she didn't tell anybody. So she's not getting the, the glory from like friends and family. Like, oh, you're pregnant. You get all the, what do you call that? The, uh, you're getting all the attention from it. So she's just doing it all secretly, then killing them when they're born. It's like she just wanted to kill something. Oh. That makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. You're not going out killing other people, but you're giving birth and killing your own. Well, that's because what I mean. it's like feeding your what is it? Feeding your um Your dark passenger from Dexter. Feeding your dark passenger from Dexter? <laughs> Probably. So yeah, I don't know. That just sounds weird to me that she would do that to full term and because you could do it a, I don't know the laws in Finland, but you would think that they would have some sort of abortions. For terminating at an early stage. Or even if you don't want to abort because some people are against abortions, carry it to term and give the child away. You can, yeah. Pretty sure there's a lot of families that love a child. There's tons of families that want to adopt. Yep. That can't have children. Give your child away. Give your child a chance. Exactly. So at the end here, what was she charged with? What was she... So she was charged with, obviously, the five counts of murder... 
concealing a corpse. What was her? So she obviously went through a psychiatric evaluation at the time too, right? Yeah, she had a psychiatric evaluation, but she denies killing these babies intentionally. She, right to the very end, she said that it they were dead. Now, according to her psychology evaluation, any anxiety was caused primarily by the fear that the murder would be discovered and the negative consequences of that discovery. Oh, yeah. So if she, she was really ang- anxious because... If somebody found the bodies... She's going to jail. She's going to jail. And she knew the consequences of the actions. She knew everything. She knew what she was doing. Yeah, I don't understand why she just keep the bodies either, though. Would it be the better way just to get rid of them so no one would ever see them? If she would have gotten rid of the babies, she would never have been caught. Well, that's what I mean, right? Like, that's... If you just take them to the forest somewhere, put a, little, put a hole in the ground, put the babies in there, she'd never get caught because she might not have like DNA on file and if the mm-hmm. DNA of the babies, they might not even have her, right? So. Right. Makes you wonder why she kept them. Oh, 100%. They're her babies and she's got to keep them close? Yeah, that's a, that's one thing. I would think that would be the reason why. I'm their mother, so I got to take care of them, but I, I just kill killed them. them. <laughs> the court did find that the homicides were not due to anxiety or fatigue of childbirth. Okay, so yeah. Makes sense right there. It was premeditated. Yeah. She killed the babies. Yeah, it had nothing to do with anything else. With no. Psychology, psychologically or anything like no. that. So on June 1st, 2015, it was concluded that Kesa suffered from mixed personality disorder by the district court. They also found that the woman's ability to understand the illegal nature of her act was understood. Right. So... She, you said she had mixed personality disorders. That's pretty much like what bipolar in our where we are. Yeah, bipolar mixed personality. Yeah, which meant on June fifteenth, Kesa was sentenced to life imprisonment for the five murders and five counts of concealment of a corpse. Yeah, I do know that uh, Finland doesn't have the death penalty, so giving her life imprisonment means that yeah, she's there for life now. Palisari, Kesa's attorney, argued that she suffered from a mental disorder. But the ruling said her actions of killing the infants were conscious and deliberate. The woman's lawyer was not satisfied with this ruling, so... They're going to probably plan to appeal it, right? Yes, they're going to appeal it. Yeah, that's that's usually what happens in almost all murder cases. They always do, like, a file to appeal. Even, like like you said, like, the last, like, earlier on the uh, Anders, they filed to appeal before the verdict was even read. (laughs) Well, yeah, like... You may as well try to appeal it, right? You have nothing else to lose. Yeah, like you, at that point. Oh, hundred percent. You should. You, every murder case, they. I do believe that they appeal. I would. I would. <laughs> why not? If you're even, allowed. Even if I was completely guilty, I would. Yeah, if you're allowed, why not? Right. I'm a changed woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot can happen when women's on our period. Sorry, do all women's on their period right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody gave me a chocolate bar, so I had to kill. I'm sorry. <laughs> what would you do for a Snickers? <laughs> I'd kill a man. Apparently. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. What would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> would, you, would you kill a man? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> In 2016, the Rova Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> court of Appeal sentenced Kesa to 13 years imprisonment for five counts of manslaughter but not for the concealment of a corpse. So they changed the verdict. Looks they like. did. In the court, probably when they yeah they appealed it, right? The court of appeals. So yeah, yeah. So they, that's why you appeal. Yeah, they recognized that the acts had been done in a cruel way, but somebody with a sound mind. Yeah. The reasoning for all this is to take away the concealment of a corpse because she didn't do that just to hide the baby. She did that to hide her crime. Right. Now get this: Case's lawyer, Mari. Palisari, I yep. think that's how you say it. Mari Palisari, yeah, sounds about right. Stated in his final statement in the district court hearing that his client was 17 weeks pregnant yet again. So she's pregnant in prison. She got pregnant during the summer of 2014. When she was originally arrested. Right, oh, exactly. Wow. But she did request to terminate. So this all would have been avoided if she was done that from the get from all the other babies. I'm dumbfounded with all that. Yeah. I just, I don't understand it at all. It seems like a waste of life, but you didn't need to waste a life because you can't have abortions and stuff. And it is. 
So. Give it away for adoption. Like yeah, there's there so many are options. So many options. Yeah, exactly. Killing so, is not an option. It so, should never be an option. Yeah, so she doesn't have to stay her life in prison, but she she had ways to deal with the situations. Take birth control. Do something. Oh, 100 percent. Like those of Alberto Gubilini, Francesca Minerva. Minerva is actually a song by the Deftones, so I know Minerva. Okay. <laughs> so I would say Alberto. Gui Bilni? Yeah. Gui B- Bilnini. Alberto Gui Bilnini and Francesca Minerva. Gui Bilnini? I would say that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know Minerva because I know the deaf. Okay. <laughs> well, they call what she did an afterbirth abortion, which apparently is a thing. Okay. Or, well, they believe it's a thing. And their quote is We claim that killing a newborn could be ethnically permissible in all the circumstances where abortion would be. Such circumstances include cases where the newborn has the potential to have an at least acceptable life, but the well-being of the family is at risk. The article reads, We propose to call this practice afterbirth abortion rather than infanticide to emphasize the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus, on which abortions in the traditional sense are performed rather than that of a child. What do you think about that? Do you think it's an afterbirth abortion? I don't believe in afterbirth abortion. So I don't believe in abor- like my personal views. I don't believe in abortion whatsoever, but that well, is me. That is you. Um, I've had to have one, but it was a medical emergency. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it, it's nice to have that option there if, if someone needs it. If there's an emergency and you have to have it done, then I, I agree, but... If you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, then I don't believe in it. Yeah, if you're using it as a birth control, yeah, I don't think that's right. But that's just our opinion. Yeah. It, so many other people might think differently, but that's our opinion. As for after birth abortion, that child is grown. That child is a a, a human. They're they're fully grown. Yep. Exactly. They are able to sustain life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I don't. I think if you're going to have an abortion, have it before term. The time is supposed to be right. Right. You don't do it when after birth abortions because that's that's murder. Murder. Yeah. If it's Plain before simple. the first trimester, I could kind of see if you need a situation where you have to have it done. Yeah, there's many situations where people might want it done. Like but they've been raped. Raped. Yeah. Right. Raped or there's... extremely underage uh, by an older person, probably mm-hmm. maybe that was. Uh, let's just say they decided to take advantage of that younger person yeah. because of their age, then I would say stuff like that, then 100%. But, I mean, if you're going to do it because you're on the sake of just doing it because you don't want a baby, then, yeah, that's right. everybody has their own situations. And I totally know the situations, and I guess you can't really say too much about that. Yeah. Well, mine was because I got pregnant before I was allowed to get pregnant. I had such a bad pregnancy with my first one. I needed two years in order to heal. Yeah. And if I tried to carry to term, either the baby or myself were going to die. So it was necessity for me to live to terminate. Yeah. In some situations, I could totally see it. Exactly. Those are one of them. And even terminating, for me, the baby was just a nut inside me. Yeah. And I still think about that. Yeah. 100%. I, I think, what if I tried? Maybe we could have both lived. Yeah. Maybe. I look at our son thinking, you know, maybe I terminated someone like him. But you never know what's going to happen. That's what that's exactly. the thing about life. You just don't know what's going to happen around the corner. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's the case of Kaiza. I'm not going to say her name. Just Kaiza. Kaiza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt to say it. <laughs> but that's the case of the Alu. Child murder. Child murders in Finland. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, Patreon episode. Yeah, everybody. We have a website now. It's at www.worldstreetcrime.com. Yeah, we have Facebook and, and Instagram. Instagram yeah. yeah, just search out those and let us know and let us know what you guys think. And uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, shorter episode. But I mean, I don't think it's going to be too much shorter, but it'll be relatively short. For sure. Okay. Another shout out to my daughter for the artwork. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Okay, guys, till next time, I'm Brad. And I'm Denise. And remember, the world is not always as it seems. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>